Hey, you guys. Uh, my name is Lainey Sweet. I am the widow of Daniel Shaver, who was shot and killed in Mesa, Arizona on January 18th um, by a police officer in an unjustified shooting. If you don't know the backstory to what happened, um, I encourage you to just look on our Facebook page and read it over there. This video is solely going to be about um, when I was in Arizona a week ago, the conversation that took place during my visit with a county attorney. On March 14th, I had an appointment with my former attorney, Mark Victor, at his office to have a um, scheduled phone conversation with the prosecutor to go over the officer's um, who was going to court for the first time the following day, just the you know the release terms of what we were hoping for and what they were aiming for. Um, and while we were on the phone with them, or with her, she dropped the news on us that they had already decided to offer him a plea of negligent homicide, which is a fourth degree felony, probation eligible. So at minimum, um, he would walk on probation at most, he would serve 80% of 3.75 years. Since it is within my rights as a victim to view the body cam footage of the shooting of my husband, um, and I had not seen that before they were already deciding to offer a plea without consulting me, the county attorney invited me down to his office to allow my attorneys for the first time to view the footage in two months since this had happened, and myself. Unfortunately, when I got there, though, I realized very quickly that um, in order for me to watch it, I was going to be silenced and given a list of things I could and could not say publicly if I was allowed to watch it. Ultimately, when it came down to it, after an hour of discussing back and forth the conditions, um, they did not want me to watch it, and I was not able to. But my previous attorneys did, and they described in great detail um, what had happened. The following conversation took place in his office, and um, you are welcome to listen to it for yourself. for two is the, the information that I were going to share on that video, you can't share it with the media the person because it will affect the case. So in sharing it with you, it, it can't go any further than people in this room. Why okay. is that? Because I can't release this information, so I'm not going to share the information with someone who might release it. I can't do that. Well, maybe there was a good time to talk about what could be said, you know? Yeah, well, you know, if, if you mm -hmm. want to share... Well, I feel like this is set up in his favor. Oh, also... Can I interrupt real quick? Sure. That, that, no, I'll, I'll get done with it. Normally, I don't share any photos or, or videos or anything like of sensitive nature with, with victims until mm -hmm. after a person has been charged or indicted. In this case, it would be an information or when, when the person is being held to answer. So actually, Mr. Montgomery, and I'm not just saying this because he's my boss, um, but, you know, I think he, we're ex he's extending you a lot of uh, courtesies, you know, and, and, um, and, and so by, by ha I think by having you go ahead and see something this difficult, because it was difficult for us to watch, and, you know, we're professionals and we're not related to him, um, that, that, uh, that's why I think this is very important, that we all understand that this cannot go outside of this, of this room, uh, media-wise, because... Um, it, it just will, it will impact negatively the trial, and, and we don't want that if, if it was to go to that, that far. Well, so could she say, assuming she watches the video, I've seen the video, um, I, it's disturbing, I'm not going to comment any further on it, or something like that? I, I, what can I not say? I don't fully understand how I'm not allowed to, I mean, the freedom of speech, why I can't. Well, and see, and here's the thing. That's confusing. You absolutely have the right, the uh, First Amendment freedom of speech. And if you want to exercise it in this case, then I'm going to limit the information you get so that I don't get in trouble mm -hmm. by disseminating information to the public. If you want to exercise your right to speak to the press, you can do that. But I can't share information with you that would then go to the press because I can't share that with the press. It's the same reason we're restricted from saying things because there's a free speech thing, but there's also a balancing with this defendant's right to a fair trial. And the People in the jury are going to be picked from the pool of people that are going to be listening to the news. And so. The news has reported my husband pointing a gun out a, a window, that, and they don't know about that there was another man in there, and all the misinformation that nobody has. They, they, they now because I, I spoke about it, and it's on a YouTube press conference video where I straighten that out. Now, will they report 
report that? No. Will they report what you say as the surviving wife? Yes. Every word of it at every single news cycle and every single time there's anything about this case that comes up, they will play your words. But what if she talks about things that are not on the video? Those are the things that are bothering yeah. me. My, yeah. my husband didn't point a, a, a gun at anybody. It wasn't <clears throat> him. He didn't do anything wrong. I, I, I think... I think um, and she doesn't get into the details of the video. Yeah, and the thing is this. I don't want the case to be about your husband. It's not. It's about the person who pulled that trigger. And so not talking about your husband actually helps the case because it keeps the focus on the defendant. Do you understand what I'm saying on that? If we're not worried about trying to defend anything that your husband did, the focus isn't on him. What happened that day was the responsibility of the police officer. Your husband didn't do anything wrong. He didn't. He was trying to comply. Could she say, I saw the video. My husband didn't do anything wrong. He was totally compliant. Um, you should not be commenting to the media about the facts in this case. You want to win. Right? I, I can't say it I'm trying to. I'm just trying to strike a happy medium here I so think, she can say something. Yeah. I think what you can certainly say is you have the opportunity uh, to meet with the assigned prosecutor on the case and to have your questions answered and your concerns addressed and that you have the opportunity to view the video and it was very upsetting and disturbing. That's it. There's nothing more that really needs to be said. Being able to tell people what you feel is perfectly understandable and I think reasonable. But not describing any of the facts is important to making sure that the defense cannot ever make a claim that there was information that I released to the public through you by showing you something that I knew you were going to talk about. Because again, one of two things happened. Either the defense is able to make the claim that uh, the defendant's not going to get a fair trial, period, or they're able to make an argument that it needs to be tried in another county. I don't want anybody else handling this case. So if I choose not to watch it, I can speak about how I feel based off of what was just described to me by my attorneys. Mm -hmm. Sure, certainly. Because I haven't seen it myself, but if I do, then I really can't. You can't say comment about what you've seen on the video. And, and, yeah. I mean, I know you understand why. Yeah. Look, Laney, you don't know me. I don't know you. But I'm going to ask you to trust me on this. Me not, me not wanting you to watch the video has got nothing to do with trying to be mean or try to deliberately say, I don't want you to watch this, and I get to tell you what to do. It's, it's having been in this position and having represented people who have lost loved ones and, and seeing how this process develops and asking you to be patient. You will be able to watch that video before it is publicly released. You have my commitment. And if anybody does release it prior to that, I'm going after them because it won't be authorized. Also, if you don't watch it, and then if you feel the need to speak to the media, and I can't advise you, that's why you have an attorney, and you haven't seen it, there's no risk of you saying something that could be then become problematic that we have to address with the court and the defense. And then you can share your feelings, your frustrations. Blame me. I don't blame you. I blame the officer, but I feel like he's not being held accountable fully to a certain degree, but not, not to what he deserves. If my husband was shot five times while crawling on the ground unjustified, like you guys have all said to me, mm -hmm. everybody who's talked about the video has said it's horrifying and it's absolutely traumatizing. But yet, we're talking about a possibility of him just walking with probation. I mean, as the bottom, but I mean, even at the max, you said at the max three years, 3.7 3. 
five for my husband who died? I mean, how is that just, how, I mean, have you ever lost somebody here? Do you have a wife? Is she alive? Have you lost anyone you really, really loved, super close to you, who, I mean, rips your soul when they leave? Because I feel like if you were sitting in my position, you would understand that 3.75 years is a slap in the face. And, and let me tell you, too, I don't sit where you sit right now. I am not in your shoes. I'm not going to pretend to understand exactly how you feel. And it's not fair for me to even try to presume that. Because I don't have to bear what you're bearing right now. I don't have to do what you're doing right now. It's not even me. It's my kids. Like, I'm, I'm strong enough. I can get through it. It's my kids. They're robbed of their wife. I mean, Danny and Nim were shakers. It's not fair to them. It's not about me. It's about what he went through. Scared alone in a hallway. I mean, begging basically for his life that he's going to shoot me. And then... And I, I don't want to mischaracterize it. <laughs> It wasn't to that degree. It was at the beginning where the officers are telling him, you need to do what we tell you to do. You're going to be shot. And he says, please don't shoot me. And then there are moments in between uh, where he's trying to comply and he's trying to crawl forward on, on his knees and his hands are in the air. And that's at that point where he reaches back. So I, I don't want to mischaracterize yeah. that. So um, those raw emotions, that's what you want to share with the media. That's perfectly fine. And I think if you watch the video, though, there's a risk that you wind up talking about what's in the video and you miscommunicating what you just shared with me. I need a list of what I can't say. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd like, no, it literally yeah, will come down to that. Please go in there and say, listen. We can clear it's not about, about what can't I say, it's more what I need to right. know. Yeah. <laughs> we can clear about what I can't that. say. There's, there's, okay. can clear clear I it. think that would help me okay. make my decision. Okay. I need to understand what I can't talk about. This doesn't feel right to me. It's being told you can't say anything. It's too broad. What does that mean? Um, I think the lady would like to stop. Be careful, as do I. She just needs a little bit better contour, a little more definition around the edges, because, you know, she's not experienced at dealing with the press and all this other stuff, and she doesn't want to say something that will be cheeky. Yeah, that's fine. Um, that's fine. Yeah, I don't think that's a problem. I don't think that's a problem. I think that's a problem. I don't 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 think that's a problem. Um, I'm very upset by the video, it was disturbing, whatever, something like that, I'm, I'm upset about it. Um, I don't know, what else? I mean, like, the facts that are already out there. He was crawling on his hands and knees, he was shot five times, I mean, those are things you... Yes, but none of that has been described in the video. I, I was specifically asked by the media this. This is why I'm, I'm saying it in these terms to you. Last week I was specifically asked by the media to describe it in the video, and I refused to do it because I... Whatever you see on the video, I can't describe. I can't share. But you guys, did you guys already say there were five shots or something like that? That was what had been previously released. And in order to make sure that there wasn't any mischaracterization, we restated that. So why can't you just simply restate that? I, I saw what... Well, well why, do we, why did we start talking to the media? Mm. Met with the county attorney's office, we reviewed the evidence, it's extremely disturbing. God. What else do you want to say, Lainey? What else would you want to say? I don't know. I just, there's people who ask questions, right. and it's, it gets hard sure. to know. Right. I don't want to watch it, and then all of a sudden I'm in a position where I'm like, I don't know what I can say and what I can't say. I kind of need a list. And you of, could just keep, you could pretend you're a politician, right? And keep saying the same thing over and over again. It's very right. disturbing. Anyway. It's very but, disturbing. But the, media the, the, the media will keep asking you questions until they get you to say something they want. And what they want you to say is what I'm saying you can't. They're going to want to know, well, what did you see? What did he say? What did he look like? How did that make you feel? They're going to try to get an emotional reaction out of you because they want it on camera to show it in order for them to get ready. I, it sounds incredibly crass, but that's exactly what they're going to try to do. They don't care about you. They don't care about your husband. All they want to do is 
trade on your emotion and on the impact to you and your family. That's good. That's Otherwise, true. quite frankly, they don't give a rat's ass about you or anything else. Yeah. You, you could say, I've, I've seen the video, it was very disturbing, I don't have any comment after that. And you could just say, talk to my lawyer if you want, and bounce them off. That's what I would highly suggest, is you can confirm. Um, I've watched the video. It was very disturbing. Um, and you know, I look forward to justice. Am I allowed to give my personal opinion? Like, I feel like it was completely unjustified? No, no, because that, that, that gets to legal conclusions and things that I can't directly say. I communicate that by the fact that we charged them. Yeah. So when I get asked a question by the media, so this wasn't justified, all this has been analyzed and charged the case. Um, so I, if, you, if you don't go down that road, the media can't walk you down it any further. Because what they're going to want to do is they're going to want to get you crying and saying that this was horrible, to make the police are evil, and that um, you, know, you wish suspects to get the death penalty and all these things that may be in your heart that you're feeling, but they want to see you say it so they can put it on the TV. And that's the worst possible scenario for us being able to handle this case going forward. It's not because I'm afraid of, of uh, creating an expectation for the office in handling the case. It's because of the impression that the community is going to get that I then can't unravel and the defense can point to and say that their client can't get a fair trial on that. The point of this video that I'm trying to make is that as a victim, I am being silenced and um, I think it is well within my rights to view the footage and I demand that it be released publicly. Um, I think that it is the only way that we can get this plea deal stopped. Um, it's absolutely unfair for an officer to be charged with second degree murder and walk away on probation. My husband was shot five times while complying on the ground unarmed and um, you know, we, we need justice. So please, please share this and uh, help us get the word out and let's demand this footage. Thank you guys.